Gravis Ultrasound Clones are quite rare. Much rarer than Sound Blasted Clones or the original Ultrasound for the matter. I've just got this Primex Soundstorm Wave and I wonder if it's any good. Gravis Ultrasounds PCBs are always red. So if you see an Ultrasound card with different color, you can be pretty much sure it's a clone card. This one is based on Gravis' own GF1 chip, which made the original Gravis an outstanding sound card with super clean output, astonishing wavetable, but very poor compatibility. On since Primex uses the same chip, compatibility won't be any better, but it may exceed Gravis in terms of sound quality. Same as original Gravis, it lacks WaveBuster connector, so any kind of MIDI daughter board is out of question. If you can't live without external MIDI device, use GamePort on the backplate with some external sound module. Backplate's got a standard layout. Line in, mic, line out, speaker out, and already mentioned game port. However, to use an external module, you need a breakout box to connect the module to, and a program called MegaM, which I'll mention later. You'll find lots of jumpers on the board to set up address, IRQ, and DMA. Memory upgrade slot, unusual CDM connectors found on old sound cards are here as well. There's no PC speaker input on the card, but that's a feature nobody actually needs. Installation is pretty much straightforward. I use latest drivers for Ultrasound Classic version 4.11. It just asked for the installation path, installed all necessary files and went straight to testing the card for available resources. After the testing's done, the setup asks if you want to update system files and reboot the system. Original Gravis card use series of patch files with recorded instruments to play MIDI music. On since this card uses the same system, it also works the same. The system Gravis developed is quite smart and easy to use. The card loads instrument into its memory, and since each instrument is one file, the card doesn't need to load all the instruments at once, as you may be familiar with in case of SF2 format, it just loads the ones it currently needs. Patch files can be exchanged for your own, if you know how to create them. There are many different patch sets online, but I used patch files from the original installation to avoid any problems during testing. The card should be compatible with the same games as the original Ultrasound. Unfortunately, it also should be incompatible with the same games as the original Ultrasound. Most of all those games lack Ultrasound support, but you may find patches online that add support for some. If there's no patch for the game, there still may be a chance to get it working. Ultrasound Classic, as well as Primax, don't have any OPL capability, which makes it quite difficult to play FM synthesis on the card is to emulate it with a special software. You've got two simple programs you can use for games that lack native support. SBOS and MegaM. Some games work with SBOS, some games with MegaM, some games with both, and some games don't work at all. SBOS can emulate Sunblaster Pro and AdLib. MegaM is able to emulate Sunblaster, AdLib, Roland MT32, Sound Canvas, and General MIDI. Even though MegaM is able to somehow emulate FM Synth, it is bloody horrible. OSBS does much better job, but it's far cry from perfect. One game that works with both is June 2. I'm gonna play entire intro four times. It's quite interesting how differently one card can sound in one game.
As I mentioned before, you need Mega M to make external sound modules to work. However, no matter what I tried, it just didn't work. I'd recommend to forget about that. And if you really need an external MIDI device or some daughter board, get another card that's easier and more reliable to set up, like some cheap ESS card. There are a couple of other differences apart from the color of PCB. Primex clearly uses higher quality components. The original Gravis uses different type of RAM slot. It had 256 kilobytes of RAM on board, upgradable to 1 megabyte with classic DIP modules. Primex, on the other hand, had half meg of RAM, also upgradable to 1 megabyte, but with SOJ modules. Ultrasound Classic was one of the first sound cards that featured hardware mixer. They released many revisions, but the first one that included hardware mixer was 3.7. Unfortunately, Primex was released after 3.7 revision and included hardware mixer as well. Unlike Classic, Primex doesn't have connector for connecting Gravis' recording daughter board, thus can't record PCM in 16-bit 44 kHz. These daughter boards were quite rare and are even rarer today. Primex is also a bit louder, about 1.5 decibels. As I said before, it needs to use software to emulate Sound Blaster or Adlib. I'll test it both cards in the same games to see if I can hear any differences between them. Mega was fine, but it sounded a bit different using SBOS. This card is almost 30 years old and it still sounds brilliant with its crystal clear output. And this is its noise level. BioForge doesn't support Gravis natively, and this is where dealing with ultrasound cards gets quite messy. I tried all the emulators and none of them worked, neither sound nor music. Then I found a patch online. It wasn't too difficult to apply the patch, however, the patch is only for MIDI music. You need to disable sound, set the music to Sound Blaster, edit a file that holds settings, run a program that initializes Gravis wavetable and run the game. Intro music is pretty good. Great, actually. This is Marine Dropship Ronix to control, making final approach for delivery of supply requisition B9 stroke 3Q and prisoner AP-127. On the other hand, menu music is terrible. Not that the instruments are off or something, they are simply missing. Doom works perfectly as always. I just set the ultrasound for music and sound and ran the game. Take a listen. <laughs> Same goes for Doom 2. I just set ultrasound in the setup and I'm ready to go. Doom uses its own ultrasound settings. On a search, it sounds differently in game than if you simply play the MIDI file. And these are the results.
D is good native support as well. No problem there then. Duke 2 needs an emulator. Works with both SBOS and Mega M. I'll let you be the judge what sounds better. Even though Dungeon Master 2 supports Gravis natively, it simply didn't work until I applied the latest patch. Gabriel Knight needs a bloody patch as well. There's a patch for multiple Sierra games out there, which is working quite well for some tracks. For some, however, not so much. Heroes of my Magic 2 and Rise of the Triad. Native support sounds brilliant. M32 emulation works great in some games. Then, there are games that rely on MT32 sounds, and since Gravis can't replicate these sounds, it's not very nice to listen to.
TFX is an interesting one. It's got native support for Gravis, but the game was always crashing during startup, until I applied patch number 3. Even though it supports Gravis natively, the support is only for sound. When you choose Gravis in the setup, it disables MIDI completely for some reason. To make MIDI work, I had to run MegaM emulator, but like this, the sound doesn't work. I tried all the options for the MIDI in the setup, and all of them worked, but Sound Blaster option was way too quiet for some reason. The only way to get both sound and music working is to get CD version, set Gravis as a sound driver on CD for music. Ultima 8 uses the same patch as Bioforge, which means only MIDI and no sound. Primex is an excellent sound card with Kraken wavetable and clean output. Many games support it natively and others can be made to work using one of the emulators. Despite what people say about ultrasound cards, there are very little games that don't work with them. For those that support it natively, it's brilliant. For those that need the emulator, it's not always that great. If you're looking for an ultrasound card, this one is as good as any. However, Primex is almost impossible to find. So, Expect pretty steep price. I found only a couple of differences between Primex and Ultrasound Classic. First is a little difference in emulating FM synth using SBOS, which is a bit weird since these two cards are using the same chip. Second is a slight difference in output noise. Using Lineout, Gravis is a bit cleaner. On the other hand, its amplifier is a bit noisier. Otherwise, these two cards are practically the same. On the safe for today. Cheers.